<sighs> Hello everybody, my name is Sinkara. As always, you know that though. Haha. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Welcome back to Crimson Grey, Dusk and Dawn. So far, I am loving this game so much. It's, it's, oh, it's so good, and it's been really good, and it's, it's teaching you healthy things, and I love that. And from the perspective of a girl like Lizzie, it's actually quite useful, and it's really sweet. And I love it so far, so if you haven't already, go watch the first two, two, three, first three episodes. Be sure to like and subscribe, join the Discord server, link at the bottom of the description. Onto the video. So, yeah, last night we had a dream. I'm not sure if it was a dream or a memory, but it was concerning. It was very concerning. John's facial expressions are always concerning. Oh, he always looks like, ha 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 ha. But that's not okay. That's not what we want. We want John to love us, which he should. He did in the ending I got in the first game, anyway. The lecture rolled onward, following, flowing around the edges of Lizzie's mind. She was absorbing some of the information, but her thoughts were mostly elsewhere. On the page in front of her, increasingly, she had taken a back corner seat so it would look like she was dutifully taking notes, but in fact she was pouring out her own thoughts onto the pages in her spiral notebook. Right, well that's a good thing to do, I guess. Lizzie paused a moment, looking over what she had written recently. It was chaotic, but a familiar chaos. She had written his name many times frequently surrounded by hearts. In several places she had drawn a little pictures of himself of herself killing Mrs. Smith. It was playful though, and writing out her emotions made her feel a little more stable. That's good, that's good. Thinking of him always made her smile. But Lizzie also stopped to consider John was analytically she what? But Lizzie also stopped to consider John as analytically as she could. Her mind ran over the roll of images she had held on her. She held on her. She held of his face. Her mind ran over the roll of images she held of his face in her brain. I will take a mental picture. Click. All of the smallest changes in his eyes, especially those really concerning ones like help get me out of here. He was sadder than usual, she realized. Perhaps because of the stress of work. Since he was con since he was covering more shifts, Lizzie resolved that she would try to. M Lizzie resolved that she would have to try even harder to lift him up. Bubble, make him as happy as he deserved to be. Pulling herself out of her thoughts, Lizzie set aside the notebook and returned to her real notes. She didn't need to take them. She didn't need to take many. Quickly jotting down the key points to catch up to the speaker. Once she was done, her mind began to wander again. It seemed that the event planning had gone through. Their local campus activist groups that their local campus activist groups had petitioned the right places, so now Francesca Kelsey was going to be speaking in town. Wonderful. That was a good thing, theoretically. It would disturb Koitek and it would make John happy. Lizzie had read some of her articles to try and vet, to try to to try to vet her, and Francesca seemed intelligent. Her visit would probably give them some nice things to talk about. Excellent. She was married too, and had been and had been for six years. Everything was fine, so Lizzie didn't object to them getting a little involved in helping the, to set up the event. Everything was fine. That's right. Lizzie absent-mindedly realized that she was gripping her pen tightly and stabbing it repeatedly into the side of her notebook, leaving it covered in gouges. Lizzie, are you okay? No, everything's fine, Lizzie. Everything's fine. She's not stealing anyone. You're, you're okay. After class, Lizzie headed out and started to walk her usual path before she remembered that things had changed. Frowning slightly, she changed her route to head to the administration building instead where she would be meeting with John. Others would be there as well. The exact purpose of the event was unclear to her. At a minimum, it would gather and receive information about the various activities that they would be doing as preparation for the visit and speech. Presumably after that, they would go to said, they would go to do said activities and she could be alone with him. Presumably, unless he doesn't too. Except that he had expressed interest, which was reasonable. Perhaps they would participate. He had noticed her anxiousness, however, and not committed to anything beforehand. That was very considerate of him, but made Lizzie vow to do a better job of supporting him. 
That's good, I think. Man, who actually wants to go to events? Like, come on, man, I'm with Lizzie on this one. I'm just admiring the books in the background, like, all the different types, seeing if I recognize any of them, but of course I don't, because I don't actually have any words on them. Not for real, but fake words. Anyway, as she entered the building, they might be real words, as she entered the building, I need a magnifying glass, as she entered the building, she saw that a crowd of people had gathered, and if anyone knows what those books are and can read the words to me, then let me know down in the comments. It appeared to be an ordinary enough college group, likely not a concern, though it was more difficult to evaluate threats in crowds such as this. Yeah, that's true. She searched through the random people in the hallway, but was unable to find John. Realizing that she was going to be engaged, Lizzie refocused on Aaron, who was coming to greet her. Right. Oh my goodness me, there's two of them now. This is getting out of hand. Aaron and two women, young, attractive women their age. Aaron and... Aaron and two women, young, attractive women of their age, wearing clothes that were stylish and extremely suggestive. Not physical threats, but potentially... No, oh, Lizzie, Lizzie, no. Lizzie gave all of them a brittle smile. Is it... I'm... I'm... I'm assuming this... With what they're doing, their pose there, <laughs> is just in Lizzie's head, and they're not actually doing that. I mean, how could that? They? Otherwise, we have triplets on campus, or at the very least, identical twins. Hey, Lizzie, good to see you here. Hello. We're just getting organized, but there are a ton of things we need to do. We already printed a bunch of flyers to put up, but we actually got a space on one of the big boards, so we need some people to help design a poster. And we also, where's John? Hmm. Over in the corner. We were going to organize after the- Thank you. Lizzie left them, though she watched Aaron and the others for a moment longer. Aaron seemed to have noticed she wasn't completely happy, which was a problem. Being herself around John made her sloppy, though. Aaron also might be more perceptive than average. Hmm. That's- that's a big mood. She headed through the crowd, searching for John. Part of her knew that the people here were probably decent, given their interest. No, too many of them were just looking for socialization. Or a cause that made them feel good about themselves. Yeah, that's probably true. There was too many of them to judge, and some could possibly be threats. Investigate everyone in the room, ignore the others, and find John. Defend John. Ask Aaron for more information. Retreat and monitor the situation. I know they're not a threat. Like me, I know they're not a threat. They're not, obviously. Obviously they're not. But Lizzie thinks they are. So we should ignore the others and find John or investigate everyone in the room. Ugh. I mean, to set her mind at ease or... Is that healthy though? Or would it be better to just ignore them and, and focus on John? And what the hell is that? Let's see. Oh. Ask Aaron for more information about what exactly? The situation or the things or what? I mean John understands us, right? John 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 wouldn't mind if I went and found him. And of course it would, why would you? That's a, it's only natural. So ignore oh ignore targets, not the others. Ooh. Well, that's quite a different sentence. Ignore targets and find John. Sure, okay. Though many options presented themselves to her, Lizzie decided to take the simplest. Best to be prepared, but not do anything that might disturb John, of course, of course. That left her feeling a little more confident in herself. Good, Oh, that's so cute. Good on you, Lizzie. I'm, I'm proud of you. But Lizzie still searched for his voice in the crowd and focused on him. Oh, what a babe. There he is in his blue t-shirt. There he was. Lizzie restrained herself and simply skipped up to him, taking his arm like any normal girlfriend would do. Her fingers dug into his arm harder than she'd intended, as he gave her a look with a hint of concern. Hello, Lizzie. Why do you look like that? Hello, Lizzie. That sounds concerning. Now I'm concerned. Sorry I'm late. She beamed at John to reassure him that everything was alright, then also beamed at the nearby people. Not likely any threats, but she beamed hard at them anyway. Fucking off, okay? That was my man. I actually just finished organizing all the different tasks. Aaron is better at drawing people together than organizing the details, you know? Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Ugh, another threat. 
Some girl laughed unnecessarily loudly at his observation, prompting Lizzie's full attention to zero in on her. Slight pupil dilation, no visible flushing, her heart rate slightly above average. Was that flirting? Was she trying to steal him away from her? But we haven't assigned tasks yet. What do you think, Lizzie? Do you want to help, or do we have too much to do at home? It was an obvious lifeline to her if she was too stressed, and Lizzie loved him for it. Yeah, that's so sweet. Aww. Of course, she could trust her John. He would always be true to her. Always, of course. Oh, you might have to go. We need all the help we can get. You shut up, okay? The girl's gaze turned away from John, too deliberately a ruse, and toward Lizzie. She gave a smile that touched the corners of her eyes, indicating that it was authentic. But though Lizzie automatically mirrored it, she felt only a cold hollowness. I was, I was actually hoping you could put up flyers. I've seen you around campus, you're super fast. Ah, well, you know me, I'm... They call me SPEED. A lot of energy drinks and, um, all, uh, Risk of Rain. I did that once. Have you ever played Risk of Rain 2? I once, I once found a, um, a, 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 a printer, a pretty printer that was giving me, her speed drinks, and I love speed, and I just, I got so many. I traded everything I had for them, and I was so fast. It was the best thing. I just jumped across the map. It was great. It was the best thing ever. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let me know if you'd like me to, if you'd like to see me play Risk of Rain. That could be fun. What game did she have in mind with such flattery? Lizzie failed to see the advantage of the girl gained, but she disliked the situation all the same. Still, there was a wide variety of tasks available, and not all of them would leave John vulnerable. She had delayed too long in answering, leaving an uncomfortable pause. It had been a very long time since her social skills had failed her like that. Worse, it was causing him stress, which was unacceptable. Lizzie pretended to be looking over the organizational sheet to buy herself a little time. Lizzie? Again, that look of concern! Stop that, John! Stop! Just chill, chill, relax, relax, that's not how you show concern! It's... <laughs> His voice sounded slightly pained, which broke Lizzie's heart. She couldn't add to his depression, she couldn't. The idea of participating wasn't unpleasant, but it would be so much calmer and more wonderful alone at home. Lizzie looked up, smiled, and made her decision. Break, um, let him participate, but keep himself, take care of it for him, participate together. Participate together! Yeah, of course! That sounds like a great idea. Why wouldn't we do that? Participate together. And then we can keep him safe, or at least be there to ward off Fritz, you know, like a, like a, uh, like a, like a, like a scarecrow, with a scarecrow of hot chicks. And we keep them away because we are an extra hot chick. We're blonde, you know, it's healthy, blonde, beautiful eyes. Pretty good looking though, but no, no, because we are great, much better, so participate together, and then at least the hot chicks will know to stay away because we are with John, we are John's, John's girl. We, we are John's hot chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Putting up the flyers sounds fun. Let's do it together. Good. We have a plan for getting them through campus, but also all over town. John began going over the plan, which was simple enough. Mm. I think Lizzie you could use some calming hydration. She could probably have done all the flyers herself, but if she got to walk around with him, then it would be worth it. Yeah. The problem was that so many other people were involved. Ugh! I hate that. It's so annoying. People John delegated to other locations. Suspicious girls with questions. At one point, they even needed to drive in someone else's car. There was too many people too close for her. She had hoped it would just be the two of them. Ah, oh, why do I understand Lizzie way too well? As they walk, as they worked, John was often smiling. The whole social environment, working together with people toward the same cause, seemed to make him happy. Really? I don't sound like him, to be honest. That was good. And he saved his brighter smiles for her, never getting too close to any of the other girls. It was fine. The event left Lizzie a little nervous, but she judged that acceptable. If she could drain stress from him into herself, that was the way it should be. When they got home, John seemed lighter than usual. Like, physically lighter, we can pick him up, or what? <laughs> she found herself smiling in response to his happiness and snuggled against him as they fell asleep after the long day, his hand stroking her hair. Oh, that's so sweet. Aww. 
Where's your cutie? Concerning music, okay. When her schedule went unusually well, Muzzy found herself actually somewhat troubled. She had no reading for classes, the shopping had gone quickly, and nothing had slowed her down. That meant that she had a surprising amount of extra time. On the one night, John needed to work late at the library. For a little while, she busied herself tidying up the house and cleaning her knives, but she found herself anxious. There was no serious premonition, just an uncomfortable feeling. She was glad to have him in her mind, and she was sure that she would soon find his song again, but she also wanted him in the flesh. She spent a while writing in her notebook, many of its pages now heavy with ink. Mostly plans for worst case scenarios, if something happened during Francesca's visit she needed to protect John, but that couldn't hold her attention for long. This was a bad night to be home alone. After chewing on one knuckle for a while, Lizzie transformed into a titan. I mean, decided that she should just go visit John at the library. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, that was a cheat. Uh, right. Anyway. She padded across the campus, noting how different it was at night. It's really pretty, though. Oh, this is nice. I love this campus. Why is my university like this? Still on that shitty Auckland. Ugh. <laughs> the normal dorms were still bright and would become progressively louder as the students started to partay. A few- whoops, oh I forgot we could do that. A few were ambling further, likely drunk or stoned, and I just realised I left the old uh, bathroom light on, so I'll be right back. They had been invited a time or two, but for the most part, she and John didn't have connections to those crowds. Being together and off-campus, even just slightly off-campus, set them apart from the other students. Oops, I like that, yeah. Normally, Lizzie never gave the subject a second thought. Now, she found herself resenting their happiness, all of them wasting their time so carelessly while he was working, alone and probably depressed. If she urged him to take fewer shifts, he would. Lizzie knew that, but as much as she wanted more of him, she didn't want to unfairly force him to do that. If John thought extra work was necessary, then he was probably right. Still, Lizzie's eyes briefly flickered to a couple sprawled over one of the one another in the grass. Neither a thread. They were pulling at their clothes though, and well past the point of just making out. Before they finished college, she wanted a moment like that. Not doing something like that in public, but simply being together by the trees, enjoying themselves. Well, we have a photo of it in our living room, so I think we've already done that. College should be a time of happy memories, light years between the drama of their meeting and the difficulties of adulthood. She wanted something she could remember forever, maybe capture in a picture. Yet, right now, everything was so complicated. Lizzie frowned and looked away, increasing her pace. It wasn't fair. The library itself was basically deserted, and again, what the hell, this university is so bloody pretty. Why can't I be here? The library itself was basically deserted, since few were doing research on a Friday night. That was why John ended up with a long shift, and why he took it, getting paid to do his own work. That's, that's clever. Good on him. Lizzie found herself shifting to walk silently instead of giving any sign of her presence. This would be a good opportunity to observe him without him being aware. It had been the first way that she had come to love him, and though the other ways were and though the other ways since coming to know him were better, watching still held a special place in her heart. I think that's sweet. <laughs> she peered around the bookshelf and finally spotted him. John sat behind the desk, reading from one of his books. He was making decent progress, brow furrowed in that concentrated look that she so loved. But occasionally his focus seemed to waver. She noticed his eyes grow a little distant and he had to backtrack on the page. Sometimes when he did, he would look at the sheet of paper beside him for a while, occasionally make a note. Man, let's just, just see how perfect she is. She's so great. But she notices these things, little things. Were they just his notes? But she knew John's note-taking habits extremely well, and that wasn't how he usually operated. It was as if he was trying to read, but simultaneously distracted by thoughts of something else. Lizzie, perhaps? 
What could it possibly be? Her mind imagined that it was some kind of love letter, but she discarded that possibility as quickly as she But she discarded that possibility as quickly as she For fuck's sake. Are we done? Hey cops. Are we done? Good. Oh yeah, anyway. But she discarded that possibility as quickly as she could. No, John wouldn't do that. If he wrote a love letter, it would be to her, obviously. He looks so sad, though. Maybe it's a breakup letter. Oh shit, he does look sad. Oh crap. Lizzie stared as if her gaze could strip away his skull and reveal every thought inside. If she just understood him perfectly, she could prevent him from being sad. There would be no anxiety then, only perfect trust for one another. Lizzie retreated further in the library, just in case he looked up in her direction, and watched him from a vantage point where he wouldn't notice. He did glance up a few times, almost as if he felt her watching, but she was too well hidden. It was wonderful that he could almost sense her, but Lizzie needed to watch him for now. Eventually, she would understand. Would she? Hours passed in a flash, and suddenly John was standing and yawning. After s <sighs> Like that. After so long of his stillness, it was almost startling. Apparently, his shift was almost over, which meant he would need to lock up. She'd probably get out of the library then. Deciding that she had watched enough, Lizzie sneaked through the back stacks and approached from the near entrance again, beaming. John smiled the instant he saw her. Oh yay. Oh, Lizzie, I hope you weren't lonely. I just wanted to come greet you once your shift was over. Here a sight for sore eyes. Oh, thank goodness. After this dead shift. Just give me a moment to lock up. Why is it morning? It didn't take him long, and they were walking across the campus to head back home. How late was this shift? What the hell? Her arm through his, and her head leaning against his shoulder. I mean, what time do libraries close? This early? It's just opening time, what? They passed the couple, now lying still on top of one another. John seemed a little surprised, but still shook his head. Lizzie inclined her head toward them, then looked back at him and raised her eyebrows. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I can barely keep her my eyes open. That's okay, I know you've studied hard. Let me help you rest. Oh. When they got home, she quickly took his bag from him to put it away before he could go to the trouble. If she acted quickly enough, he wouldn't need to use any more energy to make decisions and could just relax. Eventually, he fell asleep, his head on her lap, finally looking truly at peace. Lizzie stroked his hair and stared down at him, watching. Oh, Lizzie. John. Lizzie. John. Lizzie. John! Life proceeded normally enough. A significant part of campus was busy preparing for the arrival. But there were even more people who didn't know or didn't care, but it mattered to John, so it mattered to Lizzie, as it should. Lizzie had joined him in spending time with the preparations, and it had seemed to go well. She was glad to see John invested in something like this. Yeah, that's good. But when she came home from class one day, she realized that she might have got it entirely wrong. Why? What do you mean? Do you think he was enjoying the... Other girls, what, what do you mean? Oh, he's not happy at all. What, 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 what's going on? John slumped on the couch, too unfocused to notice her. There was an emptiness in his eyes that she hadn't seen in some time, immediately making her heart hammer in her chest. John, are you okay? Is something wrong? I'm just a little tired. There's not a problem or anything. Of course there's a problem if you're not feeling okay. I... You don't have to pretend to smile for me, John. It's okay to be sad sometimes. That's a much better expression. There we go. Thank you, Lizzie. It's nothing specific. I'm just having a bad day. Why? Who do I kill? Then stay right here and don't worry about anything. She, she skipped closer and gave him a quick hug and kiss, but didn't try to press. Instead, she moved into the kitchen, getting something shimmering. When John was depressed, he didn't want to eat. She had learned that trying to force him could turn bad, but the smell would slowly get through to him. Clever. While she, while doing her work, Lizzie headed into the bath, in, into their bathroom and countered his depression medication. It didn't seem like he had forgotten or that he had taken more than usual, which was good. But though his medication helped, it couldn't make his life perfect. Yeah, that's that's fair. There had been a time when she had desperately hoped that she could 
do that. She still wished that she could, but even but she knew that his sadness didn't mean that he didn't love her. All she could do was be supportive. When she came back out, he had slumped back further, but she saw a bit more relaxation in his posture. Suddenly, her heart ached with love for him, so intense that she had to support herself on the doorframe. She didn't deserve him. He was always so supportive, so kind. Even when it cost him, it was easy to just bask in his presence, to see him as a shining paragon. But her John was human, had limited resources. If she had missed the signs, as she sometimes did, one of Lizzie's fingers slid up to her mouth, and she started to bite down on it, but she pulled back. John wouldn't want her to do that. I, I, I do that sometimes. Oh, man. Instead, she moved into the room, determined to give back this time. She checked on the soup, then went to sit beside him, just touching his side a little, being present without demanding anything from him. John smiled at her, but didn't say anything. It was a quiet smile that faded into sadness, but she loved it too. These incidents always magnified her love for him. She didn't love his depression, but when he was like this, he seemed so truly real that she couldn't take her eyes off him. Lizzie restrained herself and just sat supportively. Yeah. So nice. After a time, though, she shifted. Later on, maybe they could eat, but until then... Do you need to talk about anything? I'll be okay. I think I just overexerted myself preparing for Kelsey's visit. Oh, I haven't been pushing you too much, have I? I liked when we worked together before, so... No, I didn't mean that at all. There's just so much to do. But you don't have to do it all, remember? Don't push too hard. You're right. Thanks, Lizzie. Lizzie thought that their conversation had gone well, but she was plagued by doubt. She hadn't noticed his depression in coming. She hadn't been able to prevent it. She began going over every interaction in, min in minute detail, wondering where she had neglected something. Where? Lizzie realized that she needed to get out of her own head. If she let herself keep thinking that way, she would end up spending the evening developing elaborate plans to kill someone or kidnap John to safety. And that's no good, is it? She needed to do something, but what? Kill someone? Kidnap John for safety? No? Um, be quietly supportive. Talk about issues. That's probably good. That sounds healthy. Let's, let's talk about issues. Lizzie wanted to be supportive, but she knew she couldn't help him if she let herself grow unstable. So she hesitantly began to talk, letting him know about her insecurities. That's good. That's a good start. You should do that. Though John didn't have much energy to spare, he did his best to listen, but as things went on, Lizzie began to tell that he was growing more depressed. Ah, oh, damn it, she wished she'd decided differently, but it was too late. Is it? No, screw that. Um, we'll be quietly supportive then. I don't know. Can we go back on it? Can we go back or... <sighs> yeah. And I'm thinking about it, I wouldn't have done that. I, I thought, okay, when I, when I said talk about issues, I thought it would be talk about his issues, not our issues. Talking about his issues would be good because he's sad. So I'm going to go back just for that, just because I, I misunderstood, okay? I misunderstood, okay? Leave me alone. Be quietly supportive. Lizzie decided that it was her turn to carry him. She doted on him for the rest of the evening, getting everything he needed, eating with him when he got hungry, and staying close. When they finally went to sleep, she held him gently, glad to see some of the tension finally easing from his face. He actually fell asleep beside her in a way that he hadn't in some time. Once he was asleep, Lizzie let herself stare at him without trying to hide anything in her gaze, drinking him in. This was her John. She had to protect him. As she fell asleep, Lizzie settled on another thought. This visit might be a good thing, but she would be very glad when it was over. Yeah, but it's still a good thing, so don't worry. It'll be over soon, nothing bad will happen, it's okay. When the day finally came, it, was as, it wasn't as it was as grand as all the build-up had had. 
It wasn't as grand as all the build-up had led Lizzie to expect. It was just another speaker coming to campus, after all, and as one of the better universities in the region, they got plenty of speakers. The growing power of pharmaceuticals was somewhat a hot topic. But it was hardly a source of celebrity. Her expectations had been tempered by John's attitude, though. Aaron and some of the other organizers were exhilarated as if a visit from a guest speaker would change everything, but as usual, he was more reserved. It was one of the things that made his love for her so special, and she loved it as part of him. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lizzie. I like that too. The low-key nature of the entire thing did a lot to calm her anxiety. Though Lizzie had filled many pages of her notebook with plans in the event of an attack, but given that this was one stop on a long speaking tour, it seemed less likely that Koitek would actually try anything. They were headed out to attend soon, and though it was going to be as casual as most of the events on campus, Lizzie was dressed up a little bit out of habit. She lingered by the cabinet, trying to select which weapons to take along with her. <laughs> the problem was that she had room for so few. Her axe, of course, but the knives were always a problem. Why were the knives a problem? Wouldn't the axe be a problem? Axes are bigger than knives. What? That doesn't make any sense. Knives are much easier to hide. Oh, black shirt. Very nice. I approve. Black shirt gang. Hell yeah. Black shirt gang. Hashtag black shirt gang. Down in the comments if you're wearing a black shirt right now. Hashtag black shirt gang. Ready to go, Lizzie? Almost, John. Just let me pick up a knife and I'll be with you. He leaned against a nearby wall, watching her thoroughly as she chose. After a moment, he spoke slowly. Oh, but it's so cute, though. Look at her choosing which knife to take. I think it's adorable. I'm just wondering, would you be happy if Kelsey managed to destroy Koitek somehow? Oh, okay, so he wasn't concerned about the knives. I think it's actually really cute that she has a knife collection and she takes this one with her. You know, choosing which knife should she take. I think that's adorable. You know, most people would probably be concerned by that, but, like, I get it, and it's so cute. I love it. I love Lizzie. Of course. It's a terrible company. It gave you that awful drug and it tried to take us apart. Hmm. But she isn't going to destroy it, just regulate it. Maybe things will get better, but I want revenge. Uh, I meant destroy in a metaphorical sense. Dismantling the corporation, if you're thinking of leveling it. Dismantling the corporation. You're more thinking level... leveling it. You're more thinking leveling it to the ground? Blood and flames. <laughs> Lizzie answered happily and finally picked a slender knife. She's so cute. I love Lizzie so much. I get psychotic, but like, it's adorable and you know, she's sweet. A good balance of range, heavy enough to be durable, but thin enough to augment her axe. With stabbing potential. She set it into its place and turned to him. But I don't mind things like this. Anything that works against them is good. And though I don't want you to hurt yourself, I'm happy you care about this so much. But if there was some way to leave them intact, but ensure they never bothered us again? I'd take it, of course. You're the most important thing. She leaned forward to give him a kiss. Mwah! Mwah. <laughs> Letting this one linger. Mwah. It's lingered enough, I think. It might be their last... It might be their last until the serious event was over, so she wanted to enjoy it. Not that she minded waiting, and made the next kiss when they came together again all the sweeter. I just wanted to say that you're the most important thing to me too. Sorry if I seem preoccupied by all this. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. No, no, it's fine. I like to see you focus on things you love. Well, I don't take you for granted. I hope I never do. Aw, oh, John. If you if you keep talking like that, we won't make it to the event. He chuckled and offered her his arm, which she gladly accepted. They needed out of the hall. They headed out of the hall to near the speech. They arrived and found the hall was surprisingly full. Almost enough to make her wish they'd arrived earlier, but it would be fine. Aaron waved to them from the near from near the front, but those seats were already full, so they took ones near the back. Right. It's good to see our work wasn't wasted, at least. Lots of people seem interested. Lots of people from the community, too. Doesn't surprise me. 
Koitek may not have had any direct presence here, but they manufacture so many drugs people have to know about them. Lizzie reached out to hold his hand while they waited for things to get started. He took it and chatted casually with her until it was finally time. <laughs> Why is he way over there? Who's coming up? After some awkward testing at the mic and a sequel of feedback, the Dean managed to quiet people down. Though he gave an introduction to Francesca Kelsey, Lizzie wasn't able to focus on it. She already knew the information and it was essentially just a formality anyway. More importantly, Lizzie looked for the woman herself and found her seated near the front. She looked like her pictures, nothing out of the ordinary, but Lizzie shifted her gaze between her and the exits just to be sure. When Francesca Kelsey took the stage, Lizzie sur surreptitiously, surreptitious, surreptitiously, is that even a word? I never heard that word before, honestly. Surreptitiously shot a glance at John. What does surreptitiously mean? Nope, I'm googling it. Surreptitiously. Surreptitiously. In a way that attempts to avoid notice. Secretively. You could have just said secretively. Okay. Lizzie surreptitiously. Now I know that word. Shot a glance at John. But she had been more wrong to worry. He had shifted to his purely focus mode. Interested only in what she had to say. Good, good. On my first day of work at the FDCA, my supervisor said I should look for another job because the organization wouldn't be needed for long. She was a good speaker, though her speech had the feeling of one that had been repeated a huge number of times. It had an air of authenticity, but it was practiced authenticity. Lizzie could only focus on it in the background anywhere. While listening idly, Lizzie came to a realization, something she had never said to John. Probably something she would never discuss with him. She squirmed a little in her seat, wondering what thoughts he might have about it, but she couldn't interrupt. Some people might have said that Koite created her with their ill-advised experiment when Abby was pregnant. Lizzie had never felt that way until now had not reflected on the fact. Now she understood why. Unable to contain herself, Lizzie leaned over and kissed John on the cheek. He blinked in surprise and then smiled at her, resting her head against his shoulder. Lizzie let her focus drift back to the speech for a moment. The industry's lobbyists would have you believe that their self-regulation has been and will continue to be affected. The primary example of what is always brought up is how... Oh boy. Thalidomide. 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 Okay, was kept out of the United States and so many children were spared birth defects. Oh yeah, we're not in Japan, it's only me. But as I demonstrate thoroughly in my book, this was more of a quirk of fate than self-regulation, and that thin layer of defense will not be remotely adequate given the massive increase in research and development we've seen over the past two decades. Most notably, many of the newest drugs being produced treat conditions that are fundamentally subjective. Their consequences, if any, will take years to emerge, and may not always be as clearly defined as birth defects. Just trying to say. Make no mistake, there are people alive today bearing the scars of this unchecked research. Yeah, you bet there are, one of them's in the audience. Sooner or later, they will come forward. Lizzie sat tensely. Come forward? Why are we coming forward? Against toy tech, you mean? Lizzie sat tensely, deciding to hold in her concerns over that development, but John had already considered that. He squeezed her hand and bent closer to whisper to her, Are you alright? John, would you want me to step forward and do that? No. His answer came immediately. Lizzie was a little surprised, and John seemed to have taken himself aback, but a moment after he smiled. No, you matter more to me than all of this. Anyone who stepped forward would be surrounded by a horrible amount of controversy. I want you here with me. Her smile widened and Lizzie leaned in to kiss him. Tears in her eyes. She had so many things she wanted to say to him, but some people around them were already glaring at their whispering. Oops, sorry. When the two of them kissed, most of the glares rolled their eyes and turned away. <laughs> the speech ended with Francesca's usual conclusion. 
The FDCA was toothless compared to the pharmaceutical giants, and the world needed a far more comprehensive set of regulations. Part of Lizzie's mind acknowledged that it's true, but it seemed very distant and clinical thought compared to the warmth inside her. Well, that's good. After the speech, the floor was open to questions, which drew their attention away from each other. This was the part that John was most interested in, after all, and Lizzie agreed with him that they were more likely to hear new information during that part. Interesting. <laughs> it's a good way to think about it. Where are my nerves, itchy? <laughs> First person to get the mic asked a boring, generic question about what students could do in the face of giant companies. She also had a flirtatious walk, so Lizzie scowled at her for both reasons. So, soon though, Aaron was at the mic to ask his question. Good man, Aaron. So, like, do we like Aaron, or do we just tolerate him? I guess if it's important, we'll find out. Aaron, buddy, my man, my moon man, how you been? You covered the potential impact on the United States well, but only spoke in vague terms about the need for international regulations. What impact do you expect the rise of pharmaceutical giants to have on the Global South? Hey, Global South, that's us, that's me, ah! New Zealand represent, hell yeah! It was a question Lizzie hadn't really given much thought. She reflected that Aaron was always caring about it, impoverished and disadvantaged people. That was not a trait Lizzie shared. But looking at it objectively, she decided that it was a good form of kindness. Yeah, it is. It is. She appreciated kindness in John, so she should give Aaron some credit as well. Oh, good on you, Aaron. Good man. Always good to be approved by Lizzie. Outside of her mind, Francesca paused for only a moment before answering. Her response was smooth, but it lacked the practiced air of her speech. Any large corporation is going to have a global impact, of course, and we'll see it especially in the rainforests and the mineral-rich countries. Needless to say, those relationships will be explo exploitative, exploita exploitative, 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 exploitable. Let's go with that. But I think we should be most suspicious of the actions that actually seem most benevolent, specifically the ostensibility of the ostensibly altruistic donations of drugs to various countries for free or produced at cost. For example, I have long believed that Zaz Inc. Zaz, like Victor Zaz, is distributing insufficiently tested drugs and efficiently using the supported beneficiaries of their donations as test subjects, but there can be serious concerns even for well-intentioned attempts, such as mental stimulants, men men meninger, AG donated in sub-Saharan Africa. They've had a positive impact on the test scores, yes, but those drugs have serious long-term side effects and were not taken according to a rigid schedule. Given the reality of the situation, both financial and personal, many recipients simply won't follow for even a chance to follow the proper course. Or even have a chance to follow the proper course. We'll be seeing more consequences for that for years. Interesting. A decent question, if not one that held particular interest for her. Lizzie listened to a few more bad questions before she sensed a general movement in John's body, and realized that he was getting up to ask a question of his own. Oh. She nodded to him and let go of his hand. Interesting. I wonder what John's gonna ask. Let's find out next time, because, ooh, that could be very interesting. What would John ask? Would he ask about something that, you know, has to do with Lizzie in some way, or... Just a general question, you know. Sure, he. I mean, he wouldn't. He wouldn't put Lizzie on the spot, of course. Obviously, no. He wouldn't say, "My girlfriend got fucked up in the hair because her mother took drugs." What do you have to say about that? No, that's just silly. He, he would ask something, but I wonder what he will ask. And I guess we'll find out in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Sinkara, and until next time, see ya. Be sure to like and subscribe, of course, join the Discord server, be notified of when the next video comes out, blah blah blah, you know how it be, just do it!